Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this really nice Lego boat animation. This is the fourth video in the Dynamic Paint series where we're taking a look at each different surface type. Last week we looked at weight and now this week we're taking a look at waves. Waves is probably the most fun surface type to play around with. You can basically take your canvas and turn it into a body of water. Then with any brush object it'll create waves as it moves along the surface. This video we're going to cover how to use the waves, all of its settings, and the different options in the brush. By the end we'll have created this really nice lego boat animation. To get started make sure to download the blend file in the description, it includes a couple of lego rock boulders that I created and two different lego boats. Feel free to use whichever one that you like. Now over here in blender we're first going to add in that curve object for the boat to follow. We're going to press shift a, go over to curve, and then add in a circle right here. In the properties tab we're going to hit n and set both the x and y to a value of around 7. The shape that I want to turn this circle into is a figure 8 because I want the animation to be seamless. Now it's actually really simple to do. In edit mode in the top view we're going to hit r and then rotate everything by 45 degrees. So holding control 45 degrees left click. Then we're going to select the two points on the top here s to scale x negative 1 and there we go we've automatically created a figure 8. Then over in the curve settings, we're going to set the resolution to 32 for both the render and the, the viewport right here. Then we can just rotate this so it's around this angle. For the canvas, we're going to press Shift A, add in a plane object. In the dimensions, let's set this up to around 13 or so. Then we'll hit Control A and apply the scale so those numbers go back to 1. Next, we're going to go into edit mode, and for the waves, we need a lot more geometry for this to work. So in edit mode, we'll hit control R. We're, we're going to add in 250 loop cuts, left click and right click. Over on the horizontal way, let's add in 250 loop cuts right here. Enter and then right click. Now that we have enough geometry to work with, let's position our objects around the scene. So for the rocks, what I want is just the, for them to be scattered about. In top view, I'm going to select this one right here, place it in the middle, maybe rotate it around, something like that. This one we'll place in the back, we'll duplicate it, place it in the back, something like that. Here we'll go towards the edge. This one we'll place right about here. And then one more, I'm going to select this one, shift D it, place it here, and then just rotate it around. Something like that will look pretty good. Then we need to make sure all of them are inside of the canvas, so drag them down slightly. This one in the back here I might drag in a little bit more, so it's a bit of a smaller rock. Now for the boats, choose whichever one that you want to use. I think I'm going to use this one right here. So go ahead and select it. And what we want to do is make sure the origin of this boat is in the exact same spot as the curve. So with the curve selected, make sure you press Shift S and go cursor to selected. Then with the boat, we'll hit Shift S and go selection to cursor. Then over in the constraints tab, we're going to add in a new constraint and it's going to be the follow path constraint. For the target, it's going to be the Bezier Curve. Once we click Animate, we also want to make sure we click on Follow Curve so it rotates with the curve. We can see it's backwards, so that's an easy fix. Right here, we're going to hit R, Z, 180, and Enter. Now it should follow the curve. For the speed, you can go ahead and select it. Over in the Curve Settings, under Path Animation, we're going to set the frames here to 200. It's important to not go the entire length of the animation because what we're going to do is we're going to have it start right around here and then when it ends it's also going to be right around here and so it's going to be a seamless transition. We, we want to make sure we add in the start here so the waves kind of form and then right here we're going to loop it later in this tutorial. So with that done we're going to go ahead and restart. The next thing that we're going to do is create that wake trail behind the boat. Now this is actually pretty simple, but what we're going to do first is create a new brush object. With this boat, if we look underneath, we have all of this complicated geometry and it's not really going to work really well for creating waves or creating that wake trail. So we're going to create a more simple brush and then use that instead. With the boat selected, I'm going to press Shift S and go cursor to selected and then let's add in a new cube. In wireframe, we're going to scale this cube down a bit and then just basically make a very low poly version. So here we're gonna hit E to extrude, go all the way to right about here. Then we'll select that part, E to extrude, then press S, X twice to lock it towards the normal of that X, scale it down a bit, E to extrude, S, X, X, scale it down one more time, 
right about there is pr pretty good. From here, we'll scale down the entire thing. Something like that will be perfectly fine. Then to actually have it follow, we're gonna hold shift, select the boat as the active object, hit control P, and then parent it to the boat. So now it's gonna move along with that boat. Next, let's set up the dynamic pane for the wake trail, and we're gonna be using an image sequence. So over in the physics tab, let's select dynamic paint with the uh, canvas selected, add in that new canvas. For now, we're gonna leave it at the vertex so we can actually see what we're doing. Over in the dry tab, we're gonna set the time of this to around 300. Then we're also gonna be adding in a couple of effects. To actually see what's happening, let's come up here and switch it over to the attribute node right here. And then underneath the output, make sure you export the wet map. Let's add in that brush by selecting the brush, dynamic paint, switch the type to brush and add that in. Now when we play it, we can see this is the effect that we're getting. Let's go ahead and restart and select the canvas. There are three different effects here and the ones we're gonna be using is drip and shrink. Drip will allow force fields to actually interact with that paint and then shrink will allow it to shrink as you can see here. The speed though is way too strong. We're gonna go much lower to 0.15. Now when we restart, we are gonna get this effect. Now for the force field, cause I want it to be a lot more random. You can see this is very uniform. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna press Shift A and just add in a force field, a turbulence force field right here. Let's place this in the middle of our scene. We'll leave the strength at one. And now when we play it, we're gonna get this effect, which is a much more interesting looking wake trail with that turbulence force field. Now the reason we're gonna be using an image sequence rather than the vertex mode is because I've noticed a lot of the time when trying to add the vertex and the waves at the same time, it just doesn't work. It doesn't simulate properly. Only one of these surface types will work. So we're gonna be using an image sequence for this to actually work properly. The resolution, we're gonna go with 2000. So we get a nice high quality image. The sub steps, we're gonna go up to a value of four. And then over here in the output tab, let's select the UV map and then make sure you change this to a different folder. I'm going to be using this folder right here. Click accept. And then we're going to export the wet maps, but we don't need the paint map. So go ahead and uncheck that. With that done, go ahead and save your project. And then we're going to click on a bake image sequence. To create the waves, we're gonna hit that plus sign to create a new surface. We can go ahead and uncheck the that surface right there. We're not gonna need it for the rest of the scene. I'm also gonna switch it back to the material. And for the format, we're gonna leave on vertex. And for the surface type, let's switch it over to the waves option. Now, when we play the animation, here is the result that we get. And that's actually looking pretty good so far, but there is a couple of settings that we can change. First off, we have here a lot of different options to go through. Open borders, what that'll do is it'll allow the edges of our canvas to be open. So instead of waves hitting the edge and bouncing backwards, they're just gonna continue on and it's gonna have open borders. We're gonna check that for this animation. Now the difference between time scale and time speed, time scale is the overall speed of the simulation and it does not affect the overall outcome of what your waves look like. Speed on the other hand, it does affect the overall outcome. It'll actually speed up or slow down the wave movement. So if you like how your simulation looks, but you just want it to slow it down a little bit, use the time scale. If you want to speed up the movement of the waves, use the speed option. For the time scale, we're going to go down to 0.6. The dampening value here controls how fast the waves dampen from moving all the way down to zero movement. Higher values will result in it dampening faster and lower values will allow the waves to last a little bit longer. I'm going to leave that at the default value. The spring option allows the springiness of the waves to either be higher or lower, and you can see the differences on screen. For this animation, I'm gonna go up to around 0.4. The smoothness obviously smooths out the waves, and I'm gonna bring this up to around 1.5. For the brush setting, let's go ahead and select it and open up the waves option here. There are three different settings to go through. First off, the type is set to depth change. We can see here, if we go into the wireframe view, that the depth of the wave is actually a little bit lower. As you can see here, it's pushing it down. And I might actually want it to go a bit more, so I'm gonna select all of these and drag them down slightly so we get a little bit of a bigger wave. That is looking pretty good, maybe slightly more. That looks pretty good. 
So that is what depth change does. It actually pushes the wave down. Obstacle, on the other hand, is basically a displacement. You can see here the movement of the waves. It stays down like a displacement, and it doesn't return to normal. Force is similar to depth change, but you can see here it's not adding that depth. It's only going to affect the movement of the waves on the surface. Finally, reflect only will only reflect waves back and forth, but it's not going to add any waves to the scene. And that's what we're going to be using for the rocks right here. So with all of the rocks selected, we're going to add in a dynamic paint, switch the type to brush, add the brush, and for the type, we're going to select reflect only. Then to copy all of that to the rest of the objects, I'm going to hit Control L and select copy modifiers. Jumping back over to our brush here, I'm going to switch it back to depth change. And then for the factor, this is the factor of the waves and how big or small they are. If I drag this up to two, for example, we can see a much bigger wave. I'm going to leave this actually at a value of 0.8, just so they're slightly smaller waves. Last, last but not least, the clamp waves option allows you to clamp the maximum height of waves. So if you have a wave that is very tall and you don't really like that, you can bring this value up and that'll clamp down on that height. Now before we bake in the waves, I noticed that if we add in the material afterwards and add in the image sequence and all of that, it breaks the wave and it doesn't work even after we bake it in. So we're going to fill out the rest of the scene with the lighting, with materials, and then finally we'll bake this out and then render out the animation. So first off, with the canvas selected, I'm going to come up here and split this view, switch it over to the shader editor, and to close off that panel, and we're going to create a new material. Uncheck the principled shader from the surface, and we're going to be adding in a shader and a glossy shader. Take the BSDF, plug it into the surface, the roughness is going to go down to zero, and then we're going to go with a darker color. For the lighting for the scene, let's jump over to the world settings. We're going to switch it over to environment texture and then add in an HDR. If you want to use the same HDR I'm using, I'll put the link in the description. It's going to be this one right here. Go ahead and open that in. The strength of this, we're going to go up to around three. And now if we go into the rendered view, we should be able to see what this looks like. I'm going to right click and shade that smooth so we get some nice smooth waves. Now to actually bring in that image sequence for the wake trail, let's press shift A, add in a texture image texture, click on open, and then navigate to your image sequence. Press A to select everything and go open image. Over here, let's add in a mix shader. And then for the factor, that's going to be from the image sequence node. So go ahead and plug that in. And then this principal shader is going to go into the bottom input. If we turn on auto refresh, we'll restart and play it. Here is the result that we get. And that is looking pretty nice. Now, one thing I don't really like is how uniform it is right here. It's just basically a straight line from the edges of our boat. And one way to help fix that is to add in a converter, color ramp, and place that right here. This will allow us to control the look of the wake a little bit more. I'm going to add in a new handle, drag it to the right side, and this is going to be a black handle. So you can see this is the effect that we get now. It's a lot more random, and I think it actually looks pretty interesting. If you notice that there is some fluid that is inside your boat, one thing that you can do to help fix that is just to drag the overall shape of your boat up slightly. We can also hide this object over in the outliner. I'm going to hit the period key to find it. Let's hide it from the view and hide it from the render. I also don't really like the look of this thing right here. This is the start of the animation. And one way to help fix that is to just bring up the offset slightly in the negative direction. If we go with a value of like negative four, it's gonna move all of that backwards. And now we get this effect, which I think looks a lot better. Maybe even up slightly higher, like negative six or five. And then from here, you can fine tune the color ramp. If you do want a little bit of wake right there, you can drag that up to more of a gray color and that might look pretty good. For the EV settings over here, we're gonna turn on a ray tracing so we get some nice reflections in the water. We're gonna turn on motion blur. We're gonna leave it at the default value. And then finally, in the color management, I'm going to set the look to very high contrast. So we get some really nice dark contrast in the scene. For the camera, I'm going to position it right about here. We'll add in a new camera by hitting Shift A, camera. Then to snap it to our location, we can hit Control, Alt, Numpad, 0. Now one thing that we're going to want to do in order to get that small look that LEGO has is over in the data tab for our camera, we can bring this all the way up to around 80. And now that's going to give us a zoomed in look, which makes everything else look a bit smaller. 
somewhere around here will be pretty good. Then to focus on that boat, we can turn on depth of field and for the focus object, select the boat. Then we can just bring down the f-stop till we get some nice shallow depth of field. Something like that will look pretty good. Finally, over in the constraints tab, we're gonna add in a new constraint and this is gonna be a track two. For the target, we'll select the boat right here. And then I also like to bring the influence down a bit to around like 0.6 or 0.5, just so it follows it a bit more loosely. Something like that will look pretty good. And now if we play through the animation, we get some really nice effects. One thing that I want to fix is right about here, we can see the background pop up for just a second. And one way to fix that is just to add in a new plane object. We'll drag this below everything and scale it up really big. We also want to make sure the waves do not go underneath this and it looks like it's pretty good. For the material, we're just gonna select the canvas here and copy this glossy shader. So open this up, hit Control C to copy that color. Then with the bigger plane selected, we'll create a new material, switch it to the glossy, paste that color in and bring the roughness down to zero. So now when we go into the camera view, we shouldn't be able to see any background anymore. Now we are ready to go ahead and bake in the waves, select your canvas object and over in the physics properties, come down here underneath the cache and click on bake. After the bake is finished, if you restart the timeline, you're gonna see that we have a couple of white frames and that's because we changed the offset of our image sequence node. But this doesn't really matter because we're gonna skip all the way to around frame 50 or so. We're gonna set the start frame to 50 and so now this is gonna be seamless. We'll skip to the front, skip to the back, and you can see here we have a seamless animation. Now you will want to skip one frame though so you don't have duplicate frames. So I'm gonna set the start frame up to 51. So now here is the animation. The start and the beginning, we have this effect. But there we go, from here, if you wanted to add more to this, you could add a minifigure to the boat or you could have the steering wheel turn as it goes through the curve. It's all up to you. If you made it to the end of this video and the other three videos in the descriptions, make sure to send me what you made over on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. And if you want to check out my book, which covers all of the simulations in Blender, I'll put the link in the description as well. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.